Pear Deck.com does require Google accounts on both the student and the teacher end. So here's the teacher view at Pear Deck.com. I'll sign in with Google and I'm going to use my teacher account that I already have started. Let's go ahead and ignore this session that's already in progress so you can see my quizzes that are saved here, um, different sessions that have been um, set into motion there, my account and add-ons. Um, you do have the ability to create a new slide deck here and you can even upload um, Google Slides or PowerPoint Slides to as a starting point. And there's oftentimes inside of the Pear Deck app that they encourage you to upgrade to premium. I'm going to try to just show you the free features as much as I can. On the student side at PearDeck.com, they might um, be encouraged to go to the student login. I'm going to use a secondary Google account here so that I can show you what it looks like for the student point of view. And it's just waiting for a code. So it's already got me signed in with my name through my Google account. We're going to do this Pear Deck demonstration. I'll click Start Presenting. And it's already in session, so let's just start a new one and those slides are coming up on the screen. It wants to make sure that my screen is connected to the projector and I do see it and now I generates that code for the students to enter in. Five letters and we hit enter and just like the other tools we can see when students have joined but now we control the pace and we advance the slides and it matches on their screen as well. So this is the first slide. When I hit next, it shows the question, maybe an image or a video to go with it. And on the student devices, they also see the question and they have the ability to answer their answer here. Um, on Pear Deck, you as the teacher decide whether you want the student responses to be viewable or hidden. So if you can imagine the whole class entering their numbers, um, then they would show up as dots on this grid. And I can actually change this answer. Let's say that I thought about it a little bit longer um, and I want to try a second guess. And that will automatically then change it on the teacher end as well. So it works well for flexible dialogue and discussion. Now I'm going to advance the slide to the next question. This is a free response. And again, if I show the student responses, I'll see each student's inputted answer and they have the ability to try again and post that and it shows that they changed their mind from their first answer to their second. You can hide those questions at any time and again advance the slides. Now another nice thing that you can do is do a quick question. While a, a, a Pear Deck quiz is in session, I can ask a question about this slide or about anything. And on the fly, while I'm teaching my students, I can maybe do a um, agree or disagree, thumbs up and thumbs down. We can have some slides in here that are just presentation content, or watch a video together, or have a discussion, and then really quick gauge where they're at with their thinking. So on the student device, they drag their dot, and on the teacher device, we would see their responses and as soon as they change it, and you have to imagine numerous dots here. Um, right now we only have one student in it, obviously. So that's Pear Deck in a nutshell, but it's a nice way to mix in both your teaching with your formative assessment right in the same set of class materials.